you know, this week some news came down that um, Denver Broncos, they got a new starting quarterback. I'm pretty excited about that. And joining us now, uh, Nick Kosmider. He's the Broncos beat writer for The Athletic. And Nick, kind of take me through this process because before training camp started, this was the competition. This was Jared Stenham. This was Zach Wilson. And here's Bo Nix, the first round draft choice. Are we should be are we surprised at this? What were the I guess milestones that he hit in order to get this job? Yeah, that's that's a great way to frame it, Kirk. I mean, this did start as as a competition, uh, but I think the biggest question was always just will Bo Nix be be ready? I, I think that was it was more about that than it really was whether Jarrett Stidham or Zach Wilson um, you know, could, could really vie for that spot because again, they drafted him 12th overall. He's, he's the future of the position. And early on, you know, first couple of weeks of camp, it, I think Jared Stidham was probably the most consistent guy. He he's the, he's the only one with a second year in the system under his belt. Um, so he had that experience factor working for him, but over the last two plus weeks, including both preseason games, it just became clear that something clicked for Bo Nix. This is a guy who at every level that he's ever played at has been an early starter. He started eighth grade football, uh, eighth grade varsity, eight, varsity football as an eighth grader. <laughs> he was a true freshman starting quarterback at Auburn and now a week one starter for the Broncos. It just clicked for him and the performances in the preseason games the last two weeks really illustrated how much things had started to become a lot more comfortable and allowed his talent to kind of sh to show out. You know, Nick, I love what you said about this. It turned from a competition to a coronation. <laughs> Explain that. Like, what, what did you see from him? How did he take this job in front of basically fans in a couple preseason games that I was like, wait, 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 this isn't a competition anymore. This dude is already the guy. Yeah, I, I think ever since that game in Indianapolis um, on August 11th, when he went out there, Jared Stidham played the first two drives. Uh, Knicks then came out uh, and, and on his first kind of big pass, third and 10, uh, his first two had been incomplete. Uh, he rolls out and, and finds Cortland Sutton on the sideline for a 22 yard gain. And from there, it was just the efficiency, Kirk, that stood out. He uh, he led seven drives in the preseason six of those led to scores three touchdowns three field goals the only drive that didn't lead to a score was when he completed a pass to his tight end Lucas Kroll who then fumbled the ball um, ending the drive after one play essentially every time he's had the ball with a real drive he's led them to scores and all those drives started on Denver's own side of the uh, on the field so it was just a the ability to to take over and to guide that offense you just said okay yeah this this is a guy who Again, started 61 college games. He's he's been playing. People know Bo Nix. He's been playing football <laughs> forever. And, and there was the early adjustment. Um, I think some of the, of some of the speed, and that will continue to occur. He's not played really top string defenses at this point. Uh, hasn't faced any of the NFL's real premier pass rushers. There's going to be some of those challenges, and there will have to be kind of a readjustment. But it was just clear then, and has only continued to grow over the last couple of weeks, that it was a matter of when, not if, he was going to be announced as a starter. Broncos beat writer for The Athletic, Nick Cosmider, joining the Rich Eisen Show. Kirk Morrison here filling in for Rich. Nick, I want to sort of take a look at the Broncos organization as a whole right quick because Russell Wilson came there and he was coming to save the Denver Broncos. After two years, he's now gone. And now they've got a new starting quarterback in Bo Nix. What's the fan base? What's the organization? What's the now feel like? Are they still thinking about Russ and the $85 million that they owe him? Or is it now people are starting to see this new vision in Sean, of, of Sean Payton and George Payton, the general manager? Yeah, it's a great question. This is an organization that has been searching for an answer, a permanent answer at quarterback since Peyton Manning retired. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be, Bo Nix will become the seventh different week one starter for the Broncos in mm. the last nine seasons. They they have cycled through quarterbacks. So you could go down the list, Trevor Simeon, um, Joe Flacco, Case Keenum, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Brett Rippett. I mean, the list goes Paxton on Lynch. and on. <laughs> Paxton Lynch. They had a game in, they had a game in 2020 
uh, in which they didn't have a quarterback, and they, they, their game got started by, by Philip Lindsay. Hold on, what's my man name? Was it Hinton? Who was it? Who was the Kendall, one? Kendall Hinton. Kendall Hinton. Kendall Hinton. There we go. Yeah. Kendall yes. Hinton. Didn't they, yeah, they, they, didn't they tell him like the night before, like in the hotel, like, "Hey, son, you're due to this uh, COVID situation thing, hey man, you starting?" He was like, "I ain't played quarterback <laughs> since high school. What are we doing?" <laughs> his his agent. I talked to Kendall Hinton's agent that night, and he thought <laughs> when Kendall called him, he was going to tell him, "Hey." I'm, I'm getting elevated for this game because he was a wide receiver at the time. Right. I'm getting elevated for this game. Maybe he's going to get to play on special teams. And then, you know, and then Kendall, you know, says, um, yeah, I'm calling you, but it's not because of what you think. <laughs> um, so that's just that's part of the I mean, yeah. the lore of this, um, you know, this just kind of cycle in which they have not been able to figure that position out. And as you well know, when you don't have that position figured out in the NFL, you, you, you have very little chance to create consistent culture, consistent success. And so I think this fan base. It's the first first round pick that they've drafted since Paxton Lynch, who obviously yeah. <laughs> just wasn't cut out for the NFL. Mm -hmm. And um, Knicks, it, it feels different. I think fans, there was a wait and see, um, I, I think, uh, component to this in terms of, you know, what's what's he going to look like and all those sorts of things. But over the last two weeks, especially Sunday when he was near perfect in his performance against the Packers, you know, the bow show is now in full effect in Denver. Like people are ready to get behind this, especially you know, Sean Payton, knowing that this is the quarterback that he wanted, that he now has a chance to implement his system with. Um, I, there's a lot of optimism, even if even if there's some reality that this is still going to take some time. Right. They, they still have a lot of work to do with this roster. I think there's excitement that there seems to be um, kind of a clear vision that hasn't always been around ever since Peyton Manning retired. You know, Nick, I don't think it's a disrespect to tell Sean Payton, the Broncos, they realize it, that the still the best team in that division is the Kansas City Chiefs. The two of the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs are going for a three-peat this year. So that being said, you have the Chiefs who are at the top, and then it's like these three other teams, Raiders, then you got Broncos, Chargers, and it's like, okay, who's who's playing for second? Like, who's going to get to second play? I just say that because What's the real life expectations now with Bo Nix starting at quarterback? Does this put them in a situation where they feel like, hey, we're getting closer to the Chiefs to be the second best team in this division? Or is a situation like, okay, it's still wait and see. We've got our guy, but we still want to see him improve or develop in that starting spot. I think internally they believe that they could be better than they were a year ago. Right. Denver went eight, eight and nine mm -hmm. last year. And if you'll remember, they started one in five. So they, they really put themselves in sort of a very untenable situation in terms of trying to chase the playoffs and yet still got themselves into position in early December where they had a chance. And I think they believe a, a couple things. One, that they're going to be a Knicks is going to be while, while he still doesn't have the experience that Russell Wilson did, um, hasn't learned the league to the degree that Russell Wilson did. They believe they're going to be better uh, in situational football than they were a year ago. Big reason why Russell Wilson during his two seasons in Denver took a hundred sacks. Uh, Bo Nix, that's one of the, his strengths. He got sacked only five times at Oregon a season ago. Uh, his senior year in high school didn't get sacked once. That's just part of his DNA as a quarterback. And, and they believe that that will allow them to avoid a lot of the negative situations that kept them from creating offensive momentum. And then situationally, they were one of the worst teams in the short red zone area last year. They've shown a lot of proficiency in that so far in training camp and in the preseason. And then the, on the defensive side of the football, the real Achilles heel was that they could not stop the run last year. Last in the league, gave up five yards per carry. They go out, they trade for John Franklin Myers from the Jets. They signed Malcolm Roach, uh, you know, kind of a, a specialist run stopper from the New Orleans Saints. And, and believe that they are a lot more fortified up front will allow them to, you know, stop the run a little more effectively and, and then can build from there. So internally, those are the components mm -hmm. where they say, hey, we have some new players. We got rid of a lot of veterans, you know, Russell Wilson, Justin Simmons, Jerry Judy, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, the center, all gone. Um, but but they believe in Bo Nix. They believe in this draft class that they just added. And and when you put all that together, there's a lot of internal optimism that there's no reason we can't be better than we were a year ago. He's Nick Kosmider, the Broncos beat writer for The Athletic, joining the Rich Eisen Show, Kirk Morrison, filling in for Rich. Look, I get so excited. I'm already getting tongue-tied because i got so many questions for you, Nick, because here's another one. Because I wake up this morning, and boom, the first thing, you know, I get these breaking news, like, notifications, and you're like, okay, what is it? What is it? And it says, A.J. Terrell, cornerback for the Atlanta Falcons uh, gets a new contract. Four years, $81 million, a pack that includes $65.8 million 
He's the second highest paid cornerback in the NFL or in NFL history. So immediately you're like, great for AJ Terrell. That's awesome. But then I'm like, man, what is Patrick Sertan Jr. going to get? Because if AJ <laughs> Terrell getting that, oh boy, what will Patrick get? And does the contract of Russell Wilson and what they're paying him out over the next two years, does that hinder what the Broncos may do? How quickly do they get this done? Because like we've been saying on this show, Nick, yesterday's price will not be today's price when it comes to Patrick Sertan Jr. Yeah, yeah, you weren't the only one um, intrigued by that that alert this morning. <laughs> Every time a quarterback gets paid, Pastor Tan is saying, all right, here we go. I mean, yep. I, I think he will ultimately become the highest paid corner uh, in the league. This guy is a guy entering his fourth season who is already a two-time Pro Bowler, has already been a unanimous first-team All-Pro, uh, was an All-Rookie. I mean, he's just done everything mm -hmm. possible that you could in his three seasons in the NFL. Um, so it is a matter of when and, and not if uh, he becomes that, that kind of guy. Uh, and I do believe that will be with the Broncos in terms of the, the dead money. You, you mentioned it. the Broncos, when they cut Russell Wilson in March, ate $85 million mm -hmm. in dead money. But what they did was they took the larger chunk that there was some options in the contract that allowed them to kind of choose um, the path to eating that money. They, they took $53 million of that dead money this year. Um, and that was why you saw guys like Justin Simmons get released, why they didn't go after free agents like Lloyd Cushenberry and Josie Jewell, the linebacker, um, you know, save some money by, by trading Jerry Judy. Uh, those things were kind of addressing where that, that cap situation was this year, next year, that what helps so much for the Broncos is they're going to have a rookie starter in, in Bo Nix. So really, even though they're going to still be on the hook for $32 million in dead money next year, when you have a rookie scale quarterback, um, you still end up with one of the, you know, uh, average paid quarterback room overall. So it's not going to affect them really after this season, a after this season that they've already had, they kind of had to take their medicine this year. I think beyond that, they will already more or less be out from under um, that dead money hit and certainly won't affect anything that they do long term with some of their key players. Uh, they already signed Quinn Miners, for example, the mm -hmm. the right guard, uh, one of the one of the rising young players at that position in the league to a four year con uh, four year eighty million dollar contract. So Passer Tan is next. I don't think it will be long. They've already picked up his fifth year option. That gives them a little bit more time to get it done. Uh, <laughs> but it, again, it's it's a formality. It only gives them a little more time to do nothing. They still got to write that check. Yeah. <laughs> the, the sooner, the better when it comes to Patrick Sertan Jr. Uh, just a couple more minutes here with Nick Cosmider joining us. He's the Broncos beat writer for the Athletics. Um, Sean Payton, year two now. What do we expect from him or how has he been around the building? I think a lot of expectations last year, he was supposed to change Russ and the Broncos, they got the, the, the head coach that they finally needed. No Russ there this year. So how has training camp been? How is this new Sean Payton in year two? Yeah, you know, it's it's another great question. I, I think people, national reporters who have come in, who have a relationship with Sean, people like my own colleague, Diana Rossini, um, Kay Adams, who's known him for a long time, who have like cycled through during their training camp tours and spent time with, with Sean Payton, have remarked that, um, you know, he seems as kind of loose and energized as he has, um, you know, really in a long time. And, and I think part of that is he's really excited to work with, with Bo Nix. It starts there. Mm. Um, this is a guy who has been told all off season, Hey, you've never worked with a rookie quarterback, right? Well, yeah, that's a box. He hadn't been able to check. And I think was really eager to dive into that whole process. And the fact that Nick's has been a really sort of um, the marriage there in terms of Bo Nix is a guy who loves the game planning aspect of football. He, he grew up as the son of a head coach. Um, his, his dad, of course, was a, was a quarterback at Auburn. Um, he really relishes that part of it. And so there's a real kinship, I think, between the two of them in that mode. And so Sean Payton is really deriving, I think, a lot of energy from that. And then overall, they have a younger team than he typically has had over the last few years. And, and that has allowed him to really kind of set the culture that he wants to more than he was a year ago. It's a lot more of, you know, quote unquote, his guys that are in the building now. And I think that's, that's been re-energizing and, and what that will ultimately mean for, for where they go this year remains to be seen. But um, they definitely, the training camp had a different vibe to it this year ago. It was, it was a lot more, um, you know, it's still, it's, he still runs a tough camp. You know, they, they run gassers after practice. They, <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they're thudding there. There's, there's guys playing in the preseason on all those sorts of things. But I think the, 
kind of the general vibe of it was a, a lot more energy to it this year. Yeah, that, that was my last question for you, by the way. Um, they don't play till Sunday, the final day of preseason, week number three. Uh, nobody's playing. I mean, who's playing? Well, Bo Nix puts the hat on and shows off everybody his new new. I don't even know who's a new sponsor for the NFL when it comes to the hats because he'll be wearing one on Sunday possibly. But well, what's now the plan or the action going forward as they prepare for Week One? So there's some real. There's still some intrigue at the quarterback spot for the Broncos because mm, there you go. Who's who's the backup? Mm. Are they keeping all three of their guys? Sean Payton has raved over the last two weeks about Zach Wilson's growth in their system, and and we've seen it uh, at practice. He is. He's loose, and his his arm talent is obviously unique. I mean, he can throw the, the some of the t- stuff you'll see in training camp. You're just like, oh yeah, that's why he was the number two overall pick in the NFL draft a few years ago because he can deliver you know 70 yard throws with the flick of his wrist like like not many people at that position can. And he's also, I think, gained comfort that they, they rave about Davis Webb, the quarterbacks coach. All three of these quarterbacks do, and and I, and I think he has really kind of helped Zach Wilson come in put a lot of that stuff that went on in New York behind him and just kind of have a fresh start. And he's played like a guy that that's a lot more loose uh, just in terms of, of, of how he's enjoying the game. And so I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how much he plays and what the Broncos ultimately decide to do uh, with both he and Jared Stidham. It's possible they keep all three on the roster, but if Zach Wilson goes out there and, and, and has a big performance, is there a team out there that's saying, Hey, like let's let's bolster our room and, and, and try to see if Denver will make a trade. I think all those things are, are are something to watch as we come to Tuesday's cuts. He's Nick Cosmider, the Broncos beat writer for the Athletic, uh, joining the Rich Eisen show. Nick, man, I appreciate the time. A lot of knowledge there for us that I can kind of digest as we get ready for week one of the regular season and Bo Nix, the starting quarterback for hopefully to be the second place AFC West um, Broncos. Appreciate the time, Nick. Thanks a lot, Kirk. Appreciate it. (laughs) Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.